Hello everybody, Sir Monkey Sales Happy here, back again with Attack on Titan. We're on episode 11, of course they took a hiatus for a week, I think due to like uh, typhoon or weather problems. Um, so yeah, there was, a, uh, there was a week where you know uh, episode 11 wasn't wasn't aired. Uh, but it has come out this week, so here we go, we're getting into episode 11. Right, so um, last episode, uh, yeah there was, there was a few, um, there was a few comments um, sort of like going around like about how uh, how almost like I don't, I don't know, like I'm, I'm starting to miss things or I, I'm not, I'm forgetting things. Now, I don't want to do a fucking um, never long bottom and say like, I can't remember what I've forgotten. But, I mean, the, the, I mean, I'm, I've gone through like the episode again and, you know, I'm kind of failing to miss what people are talking about uh the only the only thing i can really think of that, that i obviously missed was the the uh the thing at the end with um with reyna and uh the beast titan and the reason they were fighting obviously because reyna and uh reyna wanted to to go get annie but uh the, the guy in the beast titan was wanting to um go after the coordinate and that was you know it was a battle of priorities um you know, but uh, like aside from that, you know, I, you know, I, when I was watching episode ten, and I, I kind of get a feel for this when um, when I'm reacting because obviously I, I react to so much stuff, um, you know, that some days I uh, I'm just I just don't feel as a, as attentive. Um, I, I don't know if like if it's something like just the the day that I wake up or the mood I'm in, um, you know, I, just the just just the general attentiveness uh I, I you know sometimes i can feel it um when i'm reacting to something and it's just like shit i'm just not taking stuff in um you know and it's it isn't it's not a good feeling because obviously i want to be able to to be at a full full attention and and to you know recognize everything that's going on at all times uh, and i end up missing stuff um sometimes and obviously you know people you know don't like it because it's like oh shit fuck's sake this is, that was the one moment i wanted to fucking see him react to and he didn't fucking get it and it's like i mean yeah i, I understand because if it's you know if it's something that like if I, if I was to go out and like i'll watch i mean i only watch blind with like those are the only guys that i watch react and you know if, if i watch something and and you know i i pick up on something or my initial reaction when i saw it and it's like fuck you i get it you, you want people to react you know similar to what you you did when you watched it um because you want to have that sort of that sort of connection with you and the, and the person who was reacting um and I, I think that's something that is sort of it's something that's sort of different about reactions i, I kind of always had this sort of feeling as like yeah i get the reasons why you want people to react the way you do but the, the thing is, is that like this is sort of a battle of where everyone's different and everyone sort of views things differently so you know i i feel like it's you know, if people are afraid to have their opinions and be critical of other people for the way they react, but I think, you know, I think it's not, you know, I feel like it's a little backhanded to, like, you know, criticise somebody for the way somebody reacts to something. Um, you know, because you can, you can only, like, the, the whole nature of a reaction is, is to be blind to it, and that is your reaction. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, not like, it's not like something, like, you can change. I, I can get you being critical of something, like, where, you know, where, um, you know, if, it, if it's something that has clearly been, you know, planned out and it's a, it's a sort of scripted video and everything, there's something not to do with reactions, um, and, and to be to be critical of that, um, you know, and I get like it could be annoying, obviously with me being like not at a, at a full attention, um, but I, but you know, getting back to the point, like you know, last episode, episode ten, uh, you know, I felt you know there, there was a few people. That did point out like, the fact. Oh, I'm missing things now, and I, I'm I'm forgetting things, and I'm, I'm like, I'm like, what what are they talking about? Because I get the the fact that I missed the the Reiner bit at the end of the battle of Pri like that was the reason why they were fighting was the battle of priorities. But other than that, there was nothing in that episode. I feel like I didn't really have to talk about. I mean, you know, I think there was there's possibly a, a line of like manga readers who feel that way because they have a sort of more i mean the manga readers have always said like in season three that like they've kind of glossed over this arc a bit and like how like there's not as much in as there was before um and i'm kind of guessing that you know that that's where this is coming from 
like I I because I, I haven't read the manga like there's not there's not detail I can kind of pick up from this and the fact is that just like you know when it comes to that episode you know like 80 percent of it was with Kenny and you know like it like it was cool to see the sort of bit of a backstory but Kenny's not really a character I'm all that interested in um he kind of just come out of the blue and was just like oh bad guy like you know what I mean the the, the <laughs> He didn't kind of strike me as all that interesting a character. So when you have eighty percent of the um, of the the episode, you know, be about him, I, I wasn't really all that all that taken in. So you know, if I'm not attentive, but I, I, I don't know the reason why I was not like I wasn't attentive, because um, on Sundays. That's like Attack on Titan is the only video I do, so I can't even like say that. Oh, when I was what I was reacting to another video on Sunday, and I felt the same way. I don't know if it was just the mood I was in, or the fact that I just wasn't all that entertained by the episode. Um, you know, people saying like uh, th there was one guy who who said that. Um, oh, I've just turned into like another reactor who just likes the action. It's like oh, that's not true at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Uh, that, that's totally not true like if I was only there for the action trust me I wouldn't be writing stuff down <laughs> you know what I mean like if I was only there for the action I wouldn't give a fuck about what the story had to say um, and the fact is is that if you're only watching Attack on Titan for the act uh, if you're only watching Attack on Titan for the action then you're doing it wrong because you know yeah well it's got really fucking cool action in it the fucking p the the base of this fucking show is its story and and how intriguing the story is like that's where the excitement comes from you know what i mean you can have all the good action scenes in the world but if, if, if it's got nothing to fuck it, if it's got no reason for it to happen what's the point um you know so you know yeah i, I think you know maybe i wasn't as, as attentive as i could have been in that episode but you know if you guys like could explain what it was i was forgetting or missing out because generally i generally i don't know like the only thing i know that i missed out on was the reason why ryan and the beast titan were fighting oh no I, I it wasn't all that interesting an episode for me um because you had 80 percent of kenny's backstory which kenny isn't somebody i really I, I didn't really care about um anyway um like you had that bit at the end where it was just like oh, i wasn't meant to be a dad and whatever but uh, to me uh, kenny's character never it never had that sort of element of empathy or sympathy for others going back and forth until that moment. So when it when it finally came, I was like, it almost didn't seem like him. Um, and that could be, I guess, that could be down to the case of the fact that he lost everything that he thought he was getting by, you know, I'll inject myself with this, I'll gain all of this power, which is why he was. You know, hoping for to get a thing from Yuri and and see the world in a different way, and I, I did I did like that turn of the character, but as soon as as soon as he figured that out, he died. So I feel like it was all left to the end, and I, I cared about him at the end, but at that point it was it was done. So you know, unfortunately, Kenny, I, d I just don't think there was enough with him up until he's up until the end where I well I really cared. Um, uh, it might be more interesting to see like to know what I know now with why he does the things he does and the way that he is and then go back and watch it from episode one when he appeared um you know but but as, as I'm first watching it I don't really um you know I didn't really care for the character um so yeah he had like 80% of that he had like you know 10% of the um of the coronation which is yeah okay um even like you know the, the whole thing with Levi and uh, Historia punching him like that kind of was left out of the reasons why she would do that um it, it wasn't really that wasn't well written uh because that was the whole thing was like different in the manga but they were trying to do it a different way in the anime and it didn't it didn't quite it didn't really make any sense um so there was that and then there was the fight at the end so you know I, as an episode for me it was lackluster um it was interesting to get Kenny Kenny background, but other than that, I wasn't really all that interested. So, so yeah, just just some thoughts. But um, but yeah, other than that, I don't think there's anything else to really talk about. So we're just gonna get episode eleven, see what we get. So let's go. Bystander. Nanka. Hmm. I thought the situation was different. 
Why was it? Chimata de Nanti, what it is, Castor? Ushkai no Megami Samata. Historia got Joan in order to get his study, you know, he's a Koreo Yaratamida. Korette Chicagai Karakabe no Hashimade, Kojia Concucia or Tsumete Bendo or Miru. Komater Hitagaitara. Dokoni Tate Mitskatashi. Taskini could take it. Call his Ganaji Kema, who must eat dead in that day. でも急がねえとまた奴らが来ちまうライナーとベルトルトともう一度会うことになるとしたら奴らは殺さなきゃあしやらない<笑>最近は地下街にいた子たちも笑うようになったの、so、the... あれが間違ってるはずなんてないよお前は立派だよそんなことあの時は人類なんか滅べばいいとか言ってたのになああれは勢い余っただけだから<笑> Someone's jealous 兵団の粛清によって中枢にあたる人材を多く失った人類だったので、so like、地下空間で発見された光る功績など得たものも多かったとある対巨人兵器を誕生させた Shit that's cool. Like making a trap. <laughs> that's cool. It's like guilty, but. Oh, it's because he's using his power too much. Yeah, yeah. おれが疲れたくらい何だって言うんですか早く武器を揃えて行きましょう志願しなくに勝てるぞ新兵器があれば巨人なんぞ噛みくず同然だ何が嬉しくて今更調査兵なんかになったんだかそうですよ。ちっ
This is when he first got here. さあ、戦っているのか。彼はなぜ壁の外にいるのか覚えていなかった。ブリシャイエーガーという名前以外。ハンス。わざわざ壁の外をうろつくバカが。お前ら調査員以外。ハンス。ハンス。ハンス。
彼らはこう言っていた特別じゃなきゃいけないんですか<笑>私はそうは思いませんよ少なくともこの子は偉大になんてならなくてもいい人より優れていなくたってだって見てくださいよこんなに可愛い<笑>だからこの子はもう偉いんですこの世界に生まれてきてくれたんだから父親が願ったように自らの命を燃やし壁の外で燃え尽きるのだろう私は何一つ変えることはできない Okay, episode 11. Right, now that, that was a fucking. That was a nice episode. I like that. I love that because that is something that, like. I feel like everyone, it's been on fucking. Oh, it's been like everyone's minds. Especially, like, you know, the people who obviously haven't read the manga. But I imagine, like, before this chapter was ever. um Was ever written, like, ever made, uh, ever written. When this manga wasn't out, I imagine the people who are, you know, reading the story were. Would also want that story, like of what happened with Guisha and how we how we sort of what happened beforehand. Um, and it's really nice seeing like everything sort of come together in a full circle. Um, back to episode one, um, you know, and there.、Uh, I just, I just, I just really like that sort of that storytelling. When when Keith was like, This is all I'm going to tell you a story that means absolutely nothing to him on me. It's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was wondering, what, what could he possibly be talking about? Of course, it's, it's how he fucking how he met,、uh, how he met Grisha. And I think, I mean, all right, you know what? You know what? We're going to leave this until the last thing to talk about because I feel like this is something that you know, I'd rather end on. And I want to get everything out of the way first, so we'll, we'll, we'll save that.、Um, so, yeah, Historia being a sort of queen where she's, she's still, I believe, she's still sort of、um, doing her duties as a, as a scout, but also doing duties as the queen as, as well,、um, mostly by helping out everybody,、um, including the people that are on the ground.、Um, so, I'm imagining because she's queen, she can just. Get rid of the tool booths, bring everyone up. I don't know what what they're doing, what they're going to do with the underground then. Because、um, seemingly there'd be no reason for that anymore, right? I, I don't know if it's you know, good property to have. I don't know, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that.、Um, Eren's hardened ability, like making defenses and stuff, that, that's cool. That's something I didn't really. Like, I could see him, like, you know, d- d- making defenses. Like to the wall. I wasn't expecting there to, like, for him to make traps、um, and sort of like have the whole the guillotine thing. That, that's cool, where it just drops a massive, like, a massive fucking log on, onto that net、um, and get that sort of wide surface area to, to demolish the, the Titans. Um, that's yeah, that's really cool. I like that.、Um, of course, Eren, with overdoing it, he, ha- he, he has these moments where, where he's bled from the nose. And I did pick up that the first time it did happen. Like, I can't remember, even remember when it first happened, but I, I remember picking it up and being like, huh, definitely s o m e t h i n g with that. He's definitely overusing it, or it's having an effect on his body. And I'm wondering how long lasting that is. Like, if that is a, that is a real bad risk, if that is something that is, that is really bad. Um, I, mean, well, I mean, we'll we'll just have to see because you know, I mean, there's a real there's a real thing with certain families and their um their sort of cohesiveness to the, to this to like these titan powers. um Obviously, it's 
with a race family it's it's you know it's out there but seemingly how there might be something obviously with Jaeger as well um you know Grisha kind of hinted at that this episode so I, I'm not sure if I mean it wouldn't really, well it wouldn't really make sense considering Eren you know but what I, the point I'm trying to make is like if it's if the power is given to somebody who it's not supposed to be a part of, it, it does it affect them? In a, in a, you know, maybe they maybe they just don't fuse with the power enough, or their kind of body or blood can't handle it, and therefore it affects their body. Um, you know, it's it's almost like they can't handle the power kind of thing. You know, it's, I, I kind of liken it to um, the uh, Infinity Stones, like how you know with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, how there's only certain people that can. You know actually withstand the power um and i'm wondering if it's the same sort of thing um i mean because because at this point aaron has got multiple powers in one right now right and maybe that's it maybe it's just the point where he's just fucking overflowing with with power and it's kind of like you know it's kind of like that you know maybe like you know could liken it to deku and, and my hero um it's kind of just you know he's just kind of overflow with a bit too much power and it's like fuck i don't know though um, but uh, I'm sure we'll see. Uh, who the fuck? Who was that guy that apparently was in the hun the hundred fourth cadet court? Because we've never seen him before. The the ginger guy. Um, who the fuck was that? And apparently he's a scout. Um, but oh, fuck, see, I can't even remember now. When they were all picking who they were gonna be, like. Weren't the only people that stayed behind, like, the group that were Noah? So where the fuck did he come from, then? Unless he's recently turned over. Because seemingly Marlo can just change to a different outfit if he wants. He, he changed from the military police to the survey call. Hitch, obviously, he sees the as military police, but... So they can just change over if they want? Because they, they made a massive, just, like... They made a massive point to almost drive home that when they were picking their... Which route they're going to go down? Like whether are oh, you go military police, you go garrison, or you go survey call. Um, obviously, only top ten go into military police, right? But they sort of had this 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 whole thing. It's like you know, pick your shit, and then you're stuck with it almost. That's kind of the feeling I got. Like I don't think it was ever concrete, but I'm sure that that's the feeling that I got. So the fact that they can just kind of swap over after one is is. Um, I mean, I feel like it's more choice from military police. I mean, I don't think the scouts are obviously going to refuse people coming to help them, you know? Uh, so I think it's obviously more... It's not like somebody who never got in top 10 in the first place could just transfer over to the fucking military police, you know? So, so maybe it's just the fact he's in the military police is able to change if he wants because obviously he needs to be in the top tier in order to do it. Which is kind of mental. Because... Actually, now that I think about it, yeah, because I'm thinking, it's like, well, wait a minute, Hitch, how how, how did she get in? Because she, she doesn't give a golf off the air of, like, you know, real top ten, you know what I mean? Like, but then, there is something where, is it in episode 23 of the first season, when we first meet her? And I'm sure there was something, like, she didn't get in through, like, cadets, I can't remember though. I can't remember, but uh, oh well, whatever. Um, so I'm just wondering how Marlow got in then. I don't know though. Um, I wrote down Titans used as sort of like a bio weapon. Uh, um, I'm getting this feeling now because I I'm not even sure if, I if I've talked about this before. I'm not even sure if I've even had this as a sort of as a, as a plausible sort of um I, i'm not sure if i've ever discussed it and i'm i'm just thinking like of reasons as to why these titan abilities have come about and and you know there's a whole thing about maybe experiments and, and whatnot and, and shit gone wrong but more you know the more the this series goes on the more i'm th i'm thinking like this is almost it's like a fucking it's like a weapon of war it's like it's something to use against you know against the world um and it could be it could be just like a bioweapon you know i'm thinking that's probably what it, like i'm thinking that's what it is 
uh, nations at war kind of thing. Like I, I can get, I can kind of get that feeling because I, I feel like since this is something that you know we've seen the the, the area where Yamiya was in, and obviously that's not the same places where we are. So you know, there's places that have these sort of things have you know one against the other. It, it, it I don't know. You could kind of. Maybe, like, if it wasn't Titans and it was in the real world and it was nukes, you know what I mean? Like, the same kind of thing, maybe, like, you know, using Titan powers to fucking to, to defend their place. Something like that. Um, but I thought I'd just pull that out there, because the, the more I watch this show, the more that kind of just feels like it's a kind of a thing. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Keith was the, was the scout's leader before Erwin was. Um... And, you know, when he was originally just a scout, he wasn't an uh, actual commander, he went out beyond the walls and found Grisha. And Grisha had lost all of his memories, seemingly. Now, I'm not sure how much to believe. Because Grisha has... Grisha had this... Um, this plan. Like, he had this sort of this one-man mission that he was on this sort of fucking escapade um to, to, to with the rice with the race family and all that um so uh, there's one or two things this could be and i don't know if we'll ever get an answer to it but either he was he, he, that was a ruse and obviously he knew that he was a titan shifter um and he knew the only way to get in would be to act like you know he, he didn't know what he was what was going on um so i can i can definitely say that side um i'm actually more leaning towards the fact that it was a ruse and he didn't actually have amnesia but the other thing is that he could have actually forgotten everything from being a, a titan because um i mean it just depends on how um how long he's had this power because i feel like Eren at this point you know when he turns into a titan he, he remembers everything that he's done in that titan form like he, he recalls it all so it hasn't taken Eren long to master that i mean the first few times he couldn't remember what he was doing in titan form now you know it's possible that at this point grisha was the same and that he was in titan form so he just didn't remember anything um but the, the difference is that Eren, after he came out with the titan like the first couple of times or whatever the fuck he always remembered his past life. Whereas Grisha, like, you know, he, apparently he had amnesia and he forgot everything. So that kind of doesn't line up. So I'm guessing that Grisha feigned amnesia in order to sort of get in and get this sort of, you know, because I, I feel like he knew from the very start, from that very moment where Keith found him outside, that he knew that this is what he wanted, this, this is what he needed to do. Um, it took him a fucking long time though to, to, to ever do that I'm guessing if, uh, that whole time if, if you just knew it, it, it's you see there's some bits there's like there's like little tidbits that, that, that they haven't explained um, and they've probably done it on purpose but like you know I'm trying to think like is it is it really did he really feign it or has he just gotten these memories back over time or he's just made new memories and this is some, I don't know, it, it, that doesn't make sense to me. He's got to have had some knowledge of the past in order for all of this to go down. Um, you know, the, the whole thing of him talking about Keith and how, like, you know, a chosen one, you know what I mean? I think, you know, Keith has had this sort of, um, maybe this chip on his shoulder, this thing where he's, he, he's sort of um, self-righteous and you know he feels like oh shit yeah it's, it's fuck it's up to me to do this it's up to me. i'm the one that can change this i'm the one that can fucking that can get us ahead um put us on the path we're supposed to be going on and he never got there um and he sort of has this image of like oh but there's special ones and there's non-special ones and i think that the thing at the end with, with carla is that you know everyone's special in their own right you know the point this this show draws draws home is that it's not just about people being special and you know like 
anyone can die. It's not like a fucking, like a Deus Ex, Deus Ex Machina or, you know, possible plot armor or anything like that. And I think, you know, I can, uh, that point drives home. And I think com it coming from Carl has a very, a very cool way to, for, for that to sort of, for her to, um, I like how she is the one that explains that to Keith because she is the, like she's the she's she's the death that you remember that's the first episode like that is you know it's like shit we're in this Carla's the first one to go and I think th that whole that whole scene by the way of Keith talking about these special ones these like special people and having this outburst at Carla talking about normal or whatever and obviously it's all evolved around the fact that he loves you know what I mean he has a feeling for her and she was like almost like playing around as a as a bar like as a as a as a waitress, you know what I mean? But then playing along um and being and being normal but having that outburst of, you know, talking about normal people while baby Erin was there. And I think, you know, having Baby Aaron there sort of knowing what we know, knowing what he has become, obviously the protagonist of the show, knowing that he is sort of like almost like the saver of humanity is, is sort of like the, the, you know, the title that he kind of holds. And having him there as a baby, so unable to cut like, you know, unable to dissect anything that Keith is saying, I just think that it's sort of it's like an imprint you know it's like a it's like it, it's almost like a, it could be imprinted on him at that point like everything that we know of the like from the very start all the way up until now everything that we've been through with uh with Aaron and whatnot and and that whole moment there before any of it ever happened is a nice moment and i think you know when i was watching that it was kind of like goosebumps feelings because i I just I just really liked that whole sequence because um, like I said before it was like a, it was like a circle back around to, to something that I've, I've wanted to see for a long fucking time this show really fucking holds out information on you a lot of the time and it's like it just fucking cock teases you all the time and it's like fuck sake man will you just tell me something please and we've got a lot this arc a whole lot to digest um and that that moment there for me was a was a fucking huge one and I, I really liked that so that that was that was really cool um but i mean you know grisha losing all these memories aside from the fact that he knows his name and he knows that he's a doctor you see that that's where it's like <laughs> That's where it's like, right, so maybe he did have amnesia and he is getting, because he didn't realise he was a doctor until later on, right? He knew what his name was at first and then later on, then he was like, oh no, I'm a doctor. So he was getting memories back, but he could have easily feign that as well. So, I don't know. Um, I mean, the, the interesting thing is, like, you had this... You had this whole thing with Keith. Talking about people being normal, people being special, and... You've got you've got to wonder, did did he know? Did, did he know about Grisha being a Titan Shifter? Like... Almost to say it sounds stupid. It's like, no, of course he didn't fucking know. But... The way that he goes on, now it could just be like things sort of sounding similar because he's talking about special, people being special, but he's not talking about it in a way that we know that Grisha is, um, and now that Eren is, um, you know what I mean, but he's talking about like, uh, he, he said a curse at one point, and it's like, at what point, like, did, did, did he know Because I feel like from that whole sequence, you don't get a real sort of handle on um, Keith's and Grisha's relationship. Um, you know, apparently... I mean, I figure they were pretty good friends. Because they would have been around for, for a long time. Like, around each other for a long time. 
But I mean, the only thing that I really saw was Grisha came in, took the girl that Keith liked, married her, had a baby with her, and then... <laughs> like, and then basically, at the end there, told him, was like, just stay out of it. Like, you're not special like my son is. It's like, it it's, comes off as a bit dickish. Um... And you kind of, kind of feel for Kiefer in, in a way that way. Um, it, it kind of it, it gives you su such a such an uh, an interesting perspective of, of Grisha because you get you get so little of them. Um, obviously, you get like next to nothing of them in, in season one. You just see him; he goes away. He come. He, he goes. You know, I need to go away on my job. Um, and then you get more, you know, in the last few episodes of like him, you know, seeking out the race family, and obviously the fucking he, he had the Titan Shifter power, and he, you know, he, he took it from the race family, and then ended up giving it to Aaron. Um, so there's like you know bits of different people's perspectives there, and you're like, did he really mean it that way? He probably didn't. Um, and then you get this perspective from from his best friend um and he still comes off as dickish now obviously it's it's no surprise that at the end there when he obviously gives Aaron his titan power and sacrifices himself for it there's such a fucking there's such a similarity between Grisha and and the the way the race family did things about them sacrificing themselves for like to to sort of progress this on like you know Grisha obviously sacrificed himself so Eren can do it and it, I'm wondering is 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 there some reason as to why Grisha gave Eren that job and and not for him to do it himself there, there, there was that thing where Keith is telling Grisha I said why don't you why don't you do it why why and this goes in, in the idea of like did Keith really know that Grisha is a, is a titan shifter because you know I, I mean what what can Grisha do he's not a fighter um, so so how could how could Grisha go and avenge Carla right I mean it sounds like a stupid thing but like Keith is asking Grisha you go avenge Carla how does how would Grisha do that? Like, surely Keith knows that Grisha is not in any way capable, unless he knows that he's a Titan shifter. Um, and the fact that obviously he saw the the, the lightning and thun and you know the thunder thing and whatever, but obviously he wouldn't know. But he never. But Keith never seemed to ask the question. Like he never asked. The qu like he never asked. It seems like he never questioned why what happened there. It's like where did Grisha go? Why was the thunder and lightning? Why is it underneath where the thunder and lightning was? That Aaron just lying there, and th yeah, there was never like questions about it. So, so the the question is, is did Keith really know? Um, and and why Grisha decided that was what he wanted to do? I mean, it could be um a thing of maybe Grisha didn't want to live in a world without Carla again because there's so little you don't really get a, a vibe for what the relationship is especially between Grisha and, and Carla like you got you got nothing from that um th there was no like the flirting or any anything between those two characters like you just saw, saw it from Keith's perspective you never saw it from any of their perspectives or the reasons why they liked each other so you don't really get a get a, a feel for how much Grisha actually loved Carla. So it depends on how deep it is. I mean, if Grisha, if that was the reason why he wanted Aaron to do it, Grisha just didn't want to live anymore because Carla wasn't, was you know, was dead. So there's possibly that. It's an interesting question though. If that was the reason why he wanted Aaron to do it, because he couldn't live anymore without Carla. So. You know, because I'm just trying to think of any other reasons why he wouldn't just be able to do it himself. Um, too old for it, maybe. I, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just a weird sort of. It's, it's an, it's a episode where it gives you 
information regarding it, but because it comes from Keith's perspective about this whole thing being special, you can take it as, well, he's just thinking about it in his own head, being self-righteous, um, and thinking about it in so, so, sort of a, a more normal way. But you can also see it as he possibly knew that Grisha was a Titan. But why would he keep that bottled up? There's no reason for that either. There's just sort of arguments for both sides, but there's never the complete story. And I feel like that's what Attack on Titan does all the time. But, uh, but yeah, that, that, that is fucking all. And, and finally, Keith is the one that sabotaged Eren's gear. Um, I don't know if... There's multiple things, judging from what I got from Keith's character this episode, of the reasons why he did that. And I'm not sure if it's mainly because he wanted to truly test Eren to see if he could overcome it. Um, he could uh, done it out of spite, which I, I don't think that's the case. Because otherwise, why would he? Why would he have given Eren another chance? He could have just said, "Oh, he didn't do it the first time. Fuck off," you know. So I don't, yeah, I don't think he did it out of spite. Um, so yeah, I, I think maybe it was truly testing Eren's capabilities and resolve. Um, and yeah, I, I like that. I like that circle of, of him saying, "You truly are your father's son." After seeing what Grisha says, like, yeah, like he's my son. He's special. And then moving on to, "You really are your father's son." I, I, I like that. I like that, that sort of. I like that connection. That com that complete thing. So that's really cool. But that's all. So thank you everyone for watching. Uh, in the description below, I have links to a bunch of things. One of them is the Discord. I urge everyone to go over there, especially if you want to um, want me to react to a certain show, because that's where polls and things start. Um, so if you want me to react to a certain show, get over there. Also, if you just want to come talk to me at the community, you're free to do that as well. Um, and Patreon. So uh, Patreon, obviously, is a service where you can support me um, uh, like every month, sort of like a subscription service. Um, and you get different uh, tiers depending on how much you pay, and you get different things for that. Um, so obviously in Patreon, yeah, so the uh, the early access, that is the big one, that is the $5 a month. So for that, you gain access to all, uh, you know, the shows uh, a week early and you get four episodes a week instead of the usual two that the general public get a week. So you get two extra a week and you get them a week earlier. Um, and that goes for Psycho Pass, Suzume, Harahi, Tokyo Ghoul and Code Geass. Um, so if you're coming for more reactions from me, that's where you want to go. Um, full length, that's at $10 a month, so for that you get full unedited reactions to all of the all of the shows I watch. Everything that I react to gets a full length. If you want to see my full unedited reactions, that's where you want to go. Um, so yeah, there's that. $15 a month, that's the exclusive tier, so for that you get an, uh, another show I'm currently reacting to, which is Parasite. Um, that will be for as long as it's airing, it'll only be, ex it'll be exclusive for those. As soon as I finish the, um, uh, reacting to it, then it'll go on YouTube for the general public. Uh, all OVAs and all movie reactions as well go into the exclusive. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, uh, $50 a month, that is the elite tier. Of course, you don't have to do it every month. You can just pay for it once, but the $50 is the elite tier. That gives you a choice of a show that you'll need to react to, and I will react to it. It will go at the back of the list. There's about seven um, shows in the backlog right now, so it might take me a while to get around to it. But if you want to jump the queue and go at the very front, then you want to get God tier, which is $100. Um, and, you know, that'll put your... That means that your show will be reacted to next, essentially. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, the, those last two tiers, uh, the only rules are the show must be 150 episodes or less, and it must be a show that I've never seen before. Um, and they're both accumulative of those last two tiers as well. So obviously with my Patreon being on a pay-monthly basis, if you pay the first month $100 and you get your show on the list, and then the second month comes along, if you actually pay again, then you actually get another choice. Every time you pay, you get a choice of a show that you want me to react to, and I will react to it. So, that is all. So thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.